You know, there has been quite a number of people who seem to be confused about what Quicksilver's powers really are. Sure, we all know by now that his specialty is super speed, but is that all he can do? I mean, he has shown that he could recover much quicker, as his leg was broken in a fight against Apocalypse, had it casted not too long after, was in crutches for 24 hours, and then suits up less than a few days after the tragedy. So this begs the question, since Quicksilver's main power of super speed can generate side effects to better his speed, does this mean he could have more side powers? Or more specifically in this video, can Quicksilver control time? Well, let's go back to the first question first. Essentially, yes, Quicksilver does have more side powers as a result of his speed. Examples include a more impatient personality and time virtually slowing down. And here's where that second part of the question comes into play. We see an awful lot of things through Peter Maximoff's eyes in Quicksilver's X-Men Apocalypse scene. We also witness that he speeds up while time is already in slow-mo. And if you watched one of my older videos on Quicksilver, we found out that he was running over 100,000 times the speed of sound. So does this mean that he manipulated time? Well, not really. Let me explain. The famous Albert Einstein explains this very well. Einstein concluded that space and time were not so much very separate. They were more of a single continuum, which we call today space-time. In layman's terms, the faster you go, the slower time appears. Now you could be asking, isn't slowing down time the same as controlling it? The answer to that is yes, but not in the way you'd think. You see, time is relative, not absolute. In the special relativity theory, it is suggested that your space interval is different from mine, and mine is different from someone else's, and his or hers is different from the next person, and the next person, and the next person. So with the space-time being a single continuum, as stated by an article on Physics of the Universe website, that would mean time runs at different rates for different observers traveling at different speeds. So we're comparing the difference between Quicksilver's time interval and everyone else's also known as time dilation. Time appears to be slowing down for Quicksilver because he's moving so fast with respect to everyone else. But remember, Quicksilver isn't really dilating time, but rather, time is dilating for him. He simply sees time slow down as a result of his speed. But this whole thing brings up a new question. Moving much faster than the speed of sound would bring in factors like friction, whiplash, and heat in general. How is it that he is able to travel so fast without burning up? I mean, most of us have observed meteors and asteroids entering the atmosphere, whether it be on television or in person, and notice that it burns up bright. This is what friction does. The air molecules are scraped against the surface of the meteor that is pushing it out of the way, creating friction. As the meteor goes faster and faster, the scraping starts to get more rapid and thus heat gets generated. Meteors and asteroids are said to be capable at falling at speeds up to 160,000 miles per hour after entering Earth's atmosphere, and Quicksilver was moving over 500 times that speed. So why didn't he burn up due to the friction of the air? The only reason explanation, based on what we've seen so far with his side powers, is that he has some form of a limited molecular control and control over force generation. Here's the thing, he breaks the laws of physics time and time again, making things like friction and gravity confusing to understand at the state. As stated earlier, we know that he doesn't burn up like a comet. This is because his ability to move his molecules so fast grants him immunity to friction. He vibrates his molecules so fast as he runs that they phase or move around the spaces in between the molecules of the air, but then we see him sliding to a stop after running so fast as if there was friction. Since he can decide whether friction occurs or not, he has to have power over his molecular movement. We also see him seemingly phase through the X-Mansion door. I mean, with the naked eye, you can't really see it, but he goes through the door, and in the next frame, the door is sealed. And we know how slow that thing takes to open. Seriously, look at this. Maybe this may have been just the editor's choice as no one would really catch it, but with molecular phasing, Quicksilver could seemingly run through walls. And in physics class, we learned that all objects, regardless of weight and horizontal velocity, fall at the same speed, which is 9.8 meters per second. But here we see that he beats everyone else to the ground. Logic just starts to go haywire with the way we understand physics today. And for his displays of controlling the generation of force, we see Peter Maximoff lightly tap a guard on the cheek with one finger, which sends him flying as if he was punched. But here he slams someone onto a bed, and that was when he was going much faster. So throwing someone onto a soft cushion would still hurt a lot, probably even kill them. And over here we see him gently pushing everyone out of harm's way, but remember this is all under a fraction of a fraction of a second. Accelerating from 0 miles per hour to 7,000 miles per hour or more almost instantaneously would just simply break the students' necks. Also, in Days of Future Past, we see him run past several guards, all of which are blown away by fast wind speeds. But here we see him casually run by Charles, Logan, and Eric, and they weren't even phased by anything. I mean, yeah, they flinched from the incoming bullets, but that was it. So the speedster has to have some form of control of how much force he wants to exert around him as he runs. Or maybe it's just a movie and none of this is supposed to make sense. So in the end, can Quicksilver control time? No, it's more like time just dilates as a result of Quicksilver speeding up. The fact of the matter is that the dude can run so fast that the way he sees things are set so that he could stop and think before he actually does something. Because if you're moving that fast and can't see what's really going on, then what's the point of having the powers? 
Think of it as if he's in a bubble. He isn't really affecting anyone else's time, but his perception of time makes it so that he can do what he does. I really hope that wasn't confusing because that took a lot of effort. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. You all are the best. If you sincerely liked this video, then please show your support by hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, consider following me on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. And for more of my content, just click right here.